Great. Awesome. Welcome everyone to the Funk Fellowship Transfer Info Session. Thank you to everyone joining us this evening. Um, to kick things off here, we will begin with some introductions shortly. I am really excited to share a little bit about our program and also excited for you all to hear from our most recent cohort of Funk Fellows about their learning experiences, as well as their projects that they worked on during this last academic year. We also have a few slides prepared um, that we wanted to share with you all today to give you a little peek into what the fellowship entails. And I also wanna remind everyone that this is the perfect time for you all to ask questions. Feel free to use the chat function or raise your hand and unmute yourself. Um, I will also share that we will have some time saved towards the end of the session uh, for an open Q&A, and you can utilize this time to get more insights from the program staff or our student panel. And with that, let me share this agenda with everyone here. Oh, now I'm just jumping around. Okay. Um, so... We will be starting off with some introductions first, and then we will be sharing a bit about our program, diving into some core Fung Fellowship pillars and key pieces. And then our student panel will be sharing a little bit about their remarkable projects that they worked on during their time at the fellowship. And then we will be going briefly, we'll be going over the application process, deadlines, and lastly, we will have some time saved at the end to ask questions and get more information, again, either from the program staff or the student panel. And I'm happy to share with my introduction. Hi, everyone. Once again, very glad to be here with you all this evening. My name is Priyanka. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the program and student experience advisor for the Funk Fellowship. Before Cal, I was working for a nonprofit based in San Francisco, serving low income population in the city. And the nonprofit that I worked for provided a wide range of social services from supportive housing to rep pay services, um, money management services. But I was mostly engaged with their digital literacy program, providing essential digital skills to individuals with disabilities, as well as the elder population in the city. And I would say that that is when I witnessed firsthand the potential of accessible accessible technology, what it means to have accessible technology and how it can drive social impact and positive change. And I'm so glad to have found the space at Cal where I get to work with innovative leaders like yourselves, where we're constantly striving to push boundary, boundaries and um, harness our collective skills to address complex social issues in both um, the cohorts, across both the courts in health and conservation spaces. And as for my role here, I'm mostly engaged with fostering student engagement um, across both cohorts, again, planning, professional development, as well as some of the other social events that we have collaborating with our student leadership team, and overall ensuring that we're able to co-design the process and ensure that this is a great experience for, for everyone. Um, and with that, I would like to pass it on to Adrian to introduce herself. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Adrienne Greer. I'm the Assistant Director for the Fung Fellowship Program. I am lucky enough to be one of the founding members, members of our program starting way back in 2016 and have been a part of seeing it grow and evolve um, since then. Um, before I talk about my role now, I'll talk about um, I came into Cal um, and came into this space from a public health perspective. Um, I did my master's in public health at UCLA, really focused on community health sciences building programs, evaluating programs, and really focused on Latine populations as well as um, as well as older adults. And so and before coming into Cal, I was primarily working with the VA healthcare system, looking at how to bring in innovation, how to pilot different 
programs as well as um, innovative technologies across the national system and was really excited to come into this space and get the opportunity to work with students, leaders, and emerging leaders in this space. Um, as a side note, also conservation has always been something that has been a big core of, of my values and interests. And so being able to be a part of the, the fellowship that's grown into these two amazing tracks and public health and conservation has been really amazing. Um, my role here is really to support the student experience through supporting our partnerships, um, making sure that there's amazing community and industry partners that our fellows get to work with throughout the year. Um, working with our teaching team to ensure that our curriculum is staying relevant and really adapting to the interests and the passions of our students. And then really getting to work across the Fung Institute to see how we can really support you all in not only your time here at Cal, but also beyond Cal and how we can continue to support you both in your academic, professional lives as, as humans and also just continue to build, build our community. So thank you all for being here and I'll pass it back to Priyanka. Thank you, Adrian. So with that, I'm gonna turn the spotlight over to our student panel today. Um, Annie, would you like to get us started with your introduction and we could go through the list in the same order if that's okay? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yeah, so my name is Ani Ani Moreira. Uh, I am a transfer student, of course. Um, I transferred from Skyline College in San Bruno. Uh, so I'm here from the Bay Area, but I'm originally from Brazil, from Rio. Um, and when I started at Berkeley, I was very lost, not just because I was a transfer student, but also because I'm from Brazil. So I was very lost and this fellowship has been um, like a family. And so I was able to meet a lot of people and work on really cool projects. And I'm going to talk about one of them today. And I'm a cognitive science major and I'm now a senior, which is very scary. Thank you, Ani. Sophia, you're next. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sofia Valenzuela. Um, I did the fellowship this past year on the health track, and my major was public health. Um, I just graduated Cal in the spring. I'm just finishing up a couple summer classes, but after that, I'm done. Um, and I came across the fellowship my second year as a transfer, obviously. I transferred from San Jose City College, which is um, like an hour south. Um, and I was really interested in the Funk Fellowship because I've always been interested in health and understanding like how we can better serve our communities with like the resources we have and um, through science, through data, through math. So um, I thought that this, I already thought that my major in itself was pretty interdis interdisciplinary, which I really liked at Cal um, that I didn't find at any other UC, um, but the Funk Fellowship kind of just added like an extra layer of that interdisciplinariness. Um, because I really got to apply what I learned in class to um, like my the projects that I worked on. And I thought it was super cool that the Fung Fellowship is super transfer friendly and that they have two years for transfers to join. Um, whereas a lot of other programs here, if you don't join your first year when you're at Cal, um, you can't do it anymore. And then it sucks for us transfers because we only have two years here. So it's like, you miss out on so many opportunities, especially for me. I struggled a lot when I came here and I didn't really get involved um, early on. So um, I'm glad that the Fung Fellowship was there for me because I got to learn a lot of cool stuff, make a lot of cool connections. Um, one of the projects that I worked on, I actually asked um, our project advisor for a letter of recommendation that helped me get a job recently. Um, so that was fun. And then I made a lot of friends um, and we had a lot of fun like doing the project and just hanging out and stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Sophia. Tavlin. Hi, everyone. I'm Tavlin. Um, I'm a rising senior now. Um, I'm a data science and MCB double major. And I was also in the health track this past year in the fellowship. And um, like Sophia, I, I really was looking for opportunities on campus to um, bring my two degrees together, like find a kind of middle ground in between them and the Fung Fellowship and ended up being the perfect match for that. Um, it really helped me view a lot of the health issues, the public health issues uh, people face from a very 
humanistic and equity focused uh, lens and I was also able to really understand how tech plays a role into all of this so it was a really great experience for me. Thank you, Tavleen. Yesenia. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Yesenia. My pronouns are she, her, and I just graduated from Cal Spring. I was an interdisciplinary studies major with concentrations in public health, ethnic studies, and art, along with getting a certificate in design innovation, which I'm pretty sure Priyanka and Adrian will talk about further in this session. And I'm also a trans, I was also a transfer student from Chabot College, Hayward, and actually, funny enough, I heard about Funk Fellowship when I was um, applying to Cal back in 2019. At that time, they weren't offering um, for seniors, um, so I didn't get the first round, but honestly, I think that was perfect for me because it allowed me to explore other areas, and also, I was like part of the health track, and the student leadership board. And I think just even being on the student leadership board was very exciting because the term leadership always intimidated me. It's like, um, so it was great exploring what that looked like having Priyanka, Adrian, and other awesome peers. I know Jenny's here and Tabling were also on the board. So it was just really great hearing about that. And ah, sorry, it's very, <laughs> and also um, just wanting to know what design looks like. Um, Oftentimes, I thought it was just limited, so it was very cool seeing how the fellowship, seeing how design plays in like health and conservation, and yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much, and Jenny? Hi, I'm Jenny. I use the she, her pronouns. Um, I'm going to be a rising senior this year, and my major is integrative biology with a minor in creative writing. Um, kind of weird combination, which is why I like the fun fellowship so much when I found out about it online, too. Um, I like the interdisciplinariness of the fun fellowship and how um, we were able to work with people from all different perspectives and the cross-functional work that you do within your projects is something that you really don't find anywhere else at Cal. You don't really meet anyone outside of your major. It's pretty difficult, but at the Fung Fellowship, it is actually encouraged. And um, I've always had an interest in health and specifically biotech. So this was super interesting and a great chance for me to make connections too. I was also on the leadership board with Yusin and Tavlin and Shreya, who I don't think is here today. Great, thank you so much, Jenny. Yes, Shreya couldn't join us for the info session today. Um, she was in our conservation track, the last cohort, and also served in our leadership board. And I'm excited to share about her project later in the session as well. But yes, thank you all so much for being here and for the lovely introductions. So moving along here to some of our program information, I do want to preface by emphasizing that here in the fellowship, we often say that fellowship, this fellowship is what you make out of it, um, especially with such a diverse range of offerings and students having unique learning goals. We recognize that each of our journey can be shaped by individual interests um, and unique learning goals. So here, at the fellowship, although we have a range of range of offerings, there are some universal threads that brings us together and helps us translate our shared goals into actions within the fellowship and beyond. So with that, I will start off with our story. Like many other programs on campus, we have evolved and continue to evolve responding to changing program needs, shifting global dynamics and student feedback. But our story really began in 2016 as the brainchild of Coleman Funk, as pictured here with Pearl. Um, a Cal alum, an army veteran, and an entrepreneur, and much, much more. He had a vision to create an undergraduate opportunity, an undergraduate program to foster design thinkers to solve real world industry problems while being able to incorporate technology and interdisciplinary studies. 
So in 2016, with uh, the College of Engineering and the School of Public Health, we really began as a pilot program. And that first cohort was a two-year program model that was uh, and was only launched with one track, Health Plus Tech, which is now known as Health Plus Innovation. And I will also be sharing a bit more about what our one plus one model entails and how that is going to look a little different this year to better support student experience. Other notable change happened in 2020 when we launched a new track, Conservation Plus Innovation, in partnership with College of Natural Resources, Rosser College. And finally, our most recent change earlier this year, we uh, changed our track names from Tech to Innovation for both cohorts. So Health Plus Innovation and Conservation Plus Innovation, recognizing that the term innovation more holistically encompasses the fellowship's focus on technology, creativity, and customer needs and insights. And we wanted to ensure that the track names reflected the core takeaway of our fellowship experience. And again, as mentioned earlier, there is a diverse range of opportunities for our fellows to explore, and that can really differ and vary um, from areas and topics of interest. But some key pillars that our fellowship is based on are leadership, technology, and design, in addition to those subject-specific areas in health and conservation tracks. And I will also add that these opportunities within these three different pillars um, also evolve every year based on where opportunities for impact lies, as well as student interests, especially in spacious spaces like technology and innovation. What is an emerging tech right now may not be an emerging tech tomorrow. So we try to be really intentional about how we're incorporating different practices under each of these pillars. Um, but for now, to briefly go over each of these pillars, for the leadership, we look at interdisciplinary teaming as our student panel have have already mentioned before and what it means to be what it means to have inclusive teaming addressing and being proactive about implicit biases. And we also do a 360 evaluations for our teams under innovation some spaces that fellows have explored in the past are wearables blockchain, 3D printing, as well as app development, web development, and have used platforms such as Figma. Um, and we've also provided various other opportunities for our fellows to explore their interests and in where they intersect with, with impact. And last but not the least, design remains to be a core component of the fellowship. We use a human-centered design model, which goes side by side, um, or I should say, which even leads to some of these other core elements of storytelling, journey mapping, prototyping, and much more. And now for the learning progression, we also focus on ensuring that as fellows progress throughout the fellowship, their knowledge deepens as well as their skill and experience also expands within this sequential learning model, which is really uh, just a step-by-step -step learning process. And so for all fellows who are admitted to the program, um, they are required to attend a boot camp, which is essentially an all day orientation that usually takes place the first weekend um, classes start. And this is really an opportunity for the fellows to meet each other, learn more about the program, engage in some professional development activities, and um, for the program staff to ensure that we are setting everyone up for, for success. And as we progress into the fall semester, you'll see that each of these elements really builds upon each other. The first semester really sets the groundwork with um, the key ingredients for innovation and impact, giving you the foundational concepts and also creating room for improvisations and innovation. And while the first semester is about building the, the skeleton of the program, the second semester is when fellows will have an opportunity to execute all of these skills. Um, the part where we add 
muscle to the bone and deepening their knowledge and expanding their skills. There will also be an opportunity to work with an industry partner while refining user need, user research, sorry, interviewing, providing synthesis for impact innovation, lo-fi to hi-fi prototyping, tabling prototype, as well as creating a refined elevator pitch for your product or service to the broader community and your customer group. And so each of these skills that are introduced um, are continued to be honed in throughout the year long experience through the curriculum, as well as on the program side. And to share a little bit more about the tracks that we currently offer, health and innovation and conservation and innovation, the fundamental pillars that we just looked at, the three different pillars are covered under both of these tracks and some overlapping opportunities are provided throughout the year, mostly on the program side, but as a whole, they are focused on two distinct areas. So for the health track, we look at public health and well-being very broadly. Topics can include social isolation, nutrition, housing, and much more. And as we all know, these topics um, and challenges are very complex and can require in-depth assessment of policies, um, social and economic, as well as environmental factors in order to ensure that the innovation is inclusive as well as impactful. And some more, more details of the challenges that our fellows have explored within the health space are population health, health equity, social determinants, social justice, health disparities, and again, much more. For the conservation track, similar to health track, these topics require um, complex understanding of complex underlying issues and often needs in-depth assessment of a diverse range of factors. And we mostly focus on biodiversity conservation and environmental health. Topics have included land use practices, public education, environmental justice. And we've also explored some primary threats to the environment from land and sea use, direct exploitation of species, climate change, pollution, and invasive non-native species. And with that, I will pass it on to Adrian to share a little bit more about our first year experience and our learning objectives. Great. Thanks, Priyanka. So what is the fellowship? I feel like the sometimes we all have a hard time describing what are those key components. And so we, we're laying this out with you, for, for you to be able to show what happens inside the classroom and what happens also outside the classroom to make it a, a real fellowship. So for us, each semester of of the year, fellows participate in a course that has a two hour lecture and a one hour lab um, that happens in the, the north side of campus. Um, as Priyanka already mentioned, all fellows participate in a boot camp, which is essentially an orientation to get fellows, one, getting to know each other and building community, as well as a bit of a roadmap of some of those essential skills that we'll cover throughout the year long experience. Um, hopefully, unlike some of your other courses on Cal's campus, this is a very hands-on experience. So really, we really stress learning by doing. Um, this happens both, again, inside the classroom and also outside the classroom, um, in the communities that you're working with, um, around campus, um, in some of the different field trips that we might do, um, and as well as in the lab session. So really being able to apply what you're learning in the lecture portion in a lab session as well. Um, and as we're getting to very shortly, um, Building and working on projects is a core piece of the fellowship program um, and getting the experience to do those both um, in short sprints as well as a semester long project. Um, 
However, again, as Priyanka mentioned, the fellowship is really what you make it. And we work really hard throughout the year to provide a number of opt-in opportunities based on what individuals want to get out of the fellowship experience or where they might be want to grow or have some curiosity. And those could include, you know, conferences, company site visits, um, different networking events, um, both like internal to Cal and external um, to broaden our networks, um, workshops on skill building or experiential learning that folks are interested in, um, makeathons, getting the opportunity to actually build together and what does that look like, and professional development, both one-on-one -on -one support um, on resume, cover letter, applying to jobs, as well as more broadly skill building for, um, for different professional careers. So as we you know, covered already, each track um, is unique, maybe in terms of their, their subject they really dive into. Um, but as far as our overall learning objectives, all fellows, no matter if you're in the health and innovation track or the conservation and innovation track, we have these five learning objectives that are really our guiding light um, into this experience. And I'll just read them really briefly um, right now. Um, so number one, um, the main skills and techniques Fung Fellows take away are to be able to engage in customer research that is both empathetic and authentic, implementing diverse and robust sampling and allowing for feedback to influence project making decisions. Two, demonstrate a deeper, deeper understanding of the potential that both creativity and technology have to influence disciplines in substantive ways. Three, identify in the challenges and opportunities associated with diversity, bias, and conflict within teams. Implement work norms to support innovation and impact within team projects and with team partners. And last but not least, use storytelling to communicate effectively with diverse audiences and for diverse purposes. Thank you so much, Adrian. All right, moving along here. So here we have our most recent cohort, our 22-23 class of Fung Fellows. Um, on the top, our conservation track, and on the bottom, we have our health track. This cohort is representative of 36 unique majors. 26 students are double majors. 28% are transfer students, 39% identify as a person of color, and 26% identify as first gen. And beyond these numbers, what truly keeps the magic alive in our fellowship is the ability to witness the translation of these diverse ideas into inclusive spaces and innovations. And it is through this this rich tapestry of backgrounds and perspectives that our fellowship thrives and continues to make a meaningful impact. So a little bit more showing you what the fellowship might look like um, inside the classroom, starting with the design process on the upper left corner, where you see our students, uh, fellows working with tons of sticky notes really engaged in the design process. The picture in the right is, um, a picture that was taken in one of our lab sessions that happens in Shires Hall. And going down, you can see some of the events that we hold throughout the year, as Adrian mentioned, um, including final semester events, some networking events, hackathons, field trips, industry site visits, um, and much, much more. We also have guest speakers come in each semester to share more insights on different professional spaces in your respective tracks. And there are also many cross cohort community building opportunities, as well as professional development opportunities, such as resume workshops. And with that, before I pass on the turn over the spotlight to our student panel to talk about their projects. I want to quickly go over the framework for our design challenges. Our design challenges, uh, synonymous of projects, are really the key pieces of 
the fellowship experience. This is really the world experience, the real world experience that we keep talking about and emphasize on in the fellowship. And it is really an opportunity for our fellows in either of our tracks to work with industry and community partners. And this design challenge framework is mostly based on a how might we question. And that is the framework where we begin our human-centered design process. These projects have mentors who are either campus staff, industry partners, or community partners who are available to provide feedback and guidance along the way. And each team can range from four to eight fellows. I will also share that they are intentionally made of interdisciplinary students with diverse set of skills, experiences, as well as academic backgrounds. And to answer that, how might we question the solution that fellows come up with are a result of research, ideation, testing, and incorporation of feedback within the innovative space. Um, and the timeline here can really vary. It could be a few weeks, a couple of lectures to the entire semester that does happen in the spring semester. So that is our little intro to design challenge. And with that, I will pass it on to the student panel to talk about their, their projects that they worked on. Okay, that's me. Um, right, so I was part of the conservation track, uh, now conservation plus innovation. And the recent project that I worked on with for other people uh, was AquaLearn. So this project we did in partnership with Blue Endeavors. So Blue Endeavors went to our classroom and pitched their ideas, uh, their problems. So that's how it works. Each industry partner pitches their ideas and they say, okay, this is the problem that we have. We need help to solve this. So that's pretty cool because then you actually have the responsibility to try to solve that problem. So they said that the problem is that they're taking kids to learn how to dive underwater. But before that, they need to they need to teach the kids how to identify the fish species uh, species that they see underwater to help with conservation. And if you see uh, the bottom right, those are the names that the kids have to learn. Um, so that is pretty difficult. Uh, we couldn't learn that we tried um, in my group. Uh, and so they need to help with that to make learning easier. So they said, we would like to incorporate VR elements if possible to make it more interactive. So that's what we did. We created an app, um, like I said, called AquaLearn. And this app has basically three main components, uh, a component where the, the person can play a game to learn how to identify the, the species. So that GIF, that's the game. Um, and then the person can also revisit the species that they've learned to know, learn more information about it in uh, an identification book. And then the person can also interact with other players uh, by clicking on the globe button. So yeah, basically this app, with this app, we wanted to make learning easier and just more interesting and also social and um, just engaging. And it was pretty cool being able to create a VR software, uh, which is something that me and my group had never done before. Uh, so we struggled a lot, but we also had a lot of feedback from the partners and from the staff, the Fun Fellowship staff. Everyone was really helpful, always helping, uh, always offering to mentor us with the software and everything. So yeah, that's a little bit about my project. Thank you, Ani. I will also add that Ani's team was awarded the Innovation Award this past May during our annual end of year showcase. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Next project, Thriving Pink. Yes, so that was um, mine and Jenny's project. Um, we worked on this project in the spring semester and um, we were connected with our partner organization, um, which is Thriving Pink, as you can see right there. It's a, um, hold on, let me mute my notification, sorry. Um, it's a breast cancer organization based in Yolo County, which if you guys don't know where that is, it's up near UC Davis. Um, and their goal is to provide resources and support to um, women who are newly diagnosed with breast cancer or who have been on their breast cancer journey for a while, as well as women in remission. Um, 
And after um, speaking with Thriving Pink and our two mentors, um, Joni and Gail, we were able to come up with the how might we question, which is what a lot of our, um, when you're in the Fung Fellowship, that's like the first thing you learn. And that's the like, I would say the biggest thing that you carry throughout your time and understanding how to um, develop projects or how to approach um, certain questions, innovative thinking, all of that. So our how might we question was how might, how might we improve information and support services for the diverse population of breast cancer thrivers in order to meet people where they are so we can bridge the gap within the underserved communities. And um, the biggest, I think our project was a lot different from our peers because it wasn't as um, tech oriented. Like we didn't do any, our product was like our journey map and a lot of other for a lot of our peers, um, we follow kind of this, not list, but this structure that um, our instructor wanted us to follow um, in terms of submitting certain things so that she would see that we were on track for our project. And one of those was a journey map and everyone had to submit a journey map. But this just goes to show that like, depending on your um, organization, they might want specific things. And in our case, our organization wanted a journey map as the product um, to use on their website. And it kind of fit with the mission of the organization because their mission is to help make the breast cancer journey easier for women because it's already overwhelming um, given that, you know, a lot of these women are hearing the news that they have cancer for the first time. So um, we were trying to find a way to um, kind of combine all of the resources they had. We did a lot of um, interviews, but I think I'll have um, Jenny go into that so I don't talk too much about it. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. So um, like Sophia said, we did a lot of interviews. We talked with a lot of breast cancer thrivers is what they call um, people who have been impacted by breast cancer along with their supporters. And um, throughout those interviews, we were able to create the journey map and user personas down at the bottom is the user persona you see. Um, we made a couple of these and it went into depth about the person's um, process with cancer and how Thriving Pink was able to help them. So in the journey map, um, all the little ribbons were where were spots where Thriving Pink was involved in the Thriver's journey onto um, being able to live their life to the fullest despite a cancer diagnosis. Um, we also created a set of recommendations for the internal Thriving Pink leadership team, which we presented to them at their um, leadership meeting. But these two resources on the right will be um, incorporated into their website. So everyone who goes on the website can actually see these resources and be more comfortable with joining the Thriving Pink community because it is a little bit daunting when you are told you have breast cancer what are you supposed to do next with all these breast cancer um, appointments that you have to go to and doctor's appointments you don't really have the communities you don't have the bandwidth for the community support and this is what we're trying to help with yeah great thank you Sophia and Jenny okay on to the next project all right y'all um so my team and I worked on, this was actually in spring as well. We partnered with Kaiser Permanente on how to support caregivers more. And I'm a caregiver myself, so I was immediately drawn to this. Um, oftentimes caregivers feel like they're not supported. You know, there's always like um, information. Oftentimes it's not accessible. So it brought us to how might we equip caregivers with the necessary tools and knowledge through technology such that they can support the elderly? And let me see, I can't, sorry y'all. Um, so it was actually a process like we were like, do we, it, looking at the final product now is just so funny seeing how, it's not funny, but how much it has evolved. Um, so our, what we ended up creating was an app which is essentially all of our ideas. So um, it's almost like a Duolingo with like looking at daily tasks just to make it more accessible and less stressful. So you can see like daily tasks. And we also had a section where um, we can have, sorry y'all. Um, 
Um, if we can have more like information accessible. So there's like a section talking about like, I don't know, like let's look up what heart blood pressure looks like. And in that section, it will be like stories. So like people would be more inclined to like stories. And towards the end, we have we had an app where it's like as a caregiver, how would you want like your end of life planning? So um yeah, that's what it was. Um it yeah, thank you. That's great, thank you. Tablet, I think you're up next with your project. Yeah, hi. So our project was, um, it was called Be Me, Modernizing Teen Mental Health. And our partner organization was this uh, company which had an app called Be Me. And it was like a teen mental health app, kind of like Headspace, but specifically focused on teens and especially um, uh, providing support for LGBTQIA plus teens. And so our how might we statement was that how might we leverage this Be Me app to improve the teen mental health experience and coping skills with also a huge focus on like equity and accessibility because uh, they uh, said that we have only a small subset of teens on the app right now and we really want to make sure that we make it accessible to other groups and people also. So how do we do that? So our solution uh, came up that we conducted a variety of user interviews um, to gauge the mental health profile of the teenagers and their relationship with social media also. The interface of the app was, it was uh, their uh, line was like, it's TikTok, but good for you um, because it would have like interface and the entire experience was something that you would find on a regular social media app. So we really wanted to make sure that uh, what their uh, interface is providing is actually beneficial to the users. So we ended up doing journey maps based on our user interviews and also uh, asking, uh, you know, questions about people from other cultural backgrounds, other languages, um, other, you know, walks of life. Like, how do you really take care of your mental health and how can we add such modalities on this app that would make you feel much more connected and represented on the BME platform? And our solution came up that we had iteratively ideated and prototyped multiple modalities of care. These were like activities, uh, you know, to cope with, you know, to, for helping with mental health on the app, just like Headspace would have like take a deep breath and all of these kind of stuff. And also suggested multiple improvements to the existing ones and also the interface uh, based on, on the interviews we had. Thank you, Tavleen. And the last project we have featured here for this info session is Shreya's project. Her team worked with EFC West. Their how might we statement was, how might we empower the youth of the Huba Valley tribe to reclaim their food sovereignty, improve the health outcomes, and preserve their cultural heritage through a cooking curriculum and nutritional science program. And their solution um, is tailored or was focused on tailoring a cooking curriculum and a nutritional science program for Hoopa Valley Tribes high school students, which teaches traditional food practices and nutrition principles, equipping them with practical cooking skills. Sorry. Okay, and I can't read the rest because there is my transcription is working. Adrian, do you mind? I, it looks like I can't remove it. Or yeah, of course. The last part of the solution is fostering connections to food heritage and facilitating community engagement, um, empowering. Um, the tribe to reclaim food sovereignty, improve health, and preserve cultural traditions. I'll also say this group is actually continuing this project into this year on their own as an independent project that the fellowship is also supporting them on. This has been a project that we've we've supported for a few years, um, which is really really amazing. And um, you know we're lucky to have strong partnerships to continue on year after year. Um, so this is one example of one of those. Great, thank you so much, Adrian. 
Awesome. So I know we're we're almost at time. So before we move on to the Q&A part of this session, I want to quickly share some information regarding the application. The Fung Fellowship transfer applications are due on July 21st by midnight. Um, it may take you somewhere from one to two hours max to work on the application, and it's really an opportunity for us to learn more about you, your interests, and what brings you to the space. Um, there are no major or GPA requirements, and the application is open to junior and senior transfers. Um, and you can learn more about our program on our website. And also, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you come across any questions while working on your applications. Um, final fellowship offers, you can see on the timeline below, will be sent out by August 11th for this fall start. So I will, um, I'm going to stop recording here.